Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. I am super excited for today's very special guest. TJ Rolliter is someone I have been following for 15, 20 years. He is known as the Blue Jeans Millionaire. He started his first business cleaning carpets in 1985. Three years later, he and his wife started their first direct response marketing business. Within their first five years, they brought in over $10 million dollars. Since then, they've been on a mission to help people discover the tips, tricks, and strategies for making money. TJ has brought in over $150 million over the last 25 years in business and believes the best years are ahead. TJ, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thank you, Seth. It is my pleasure. So let's go back in time a little bit for our listeners who don't necessarily know your story. You started out cleaning carpets. How did you make the transition from carpet cleaning to direct response marketing? This is back in the 1980s now. So that that definitely dates me. Uh, 1985, I was already sending for all of these money-making plans and programs. That was before the World Wide Web, at least seven or eight years before, you know, everybody was online. But um, I started sending away for money-making plans and programs that were advertised in some of the tabloid magazines in the back in the classified ad section. And and then I got on all the mailing lists. And I'm still on all the mailing lists. 40 years later, I'm still on all of the mailing lists. And, uh, you know, your name is bought, sold, and traded. And so every day I would go to my mailbox at the end of a, a hard day. And, and in it would be all of these sales letters from companies that I ultimately ended up uh, competing with or or whatever. Uh, but uh, a lot of those plans and programs that I bought, and this is 40 years ago now, uh, because, uh, yeah, I started my first business in 85, but before all of that, I was sending away for all these plans and programs. They were, a lot of them were mail order. That's what we called it back then. So again, that's that was decades ago. We now call it direct response marketing. But I just fell in love with the idea. And I'm still in love with the idea, Seth of getting cash checks and money orders, and of course now credit card authorizations, thank God for credit cards, but uh, getting cash checks and money orders from people I would never meet or talk to. It's it's an idea that excited me then, it excites me now, and uh, that's, uh, that's kind of the short but true version. Absolutely true, and we know the longer versions in some of your dozens of amazing books. Let's, do you remember your first success other than carpet cleaning? Do you remember the first product, the first thing you ever created that sold? Oh, absolutely. It was the one that, well, it's, it's and, and by the way, this is based on the same principles that we use every single day right now. It was called Dialing for Dollars. We started with just a few hundred dollars promoting that product. Um, and ultimately, we were selling 160,000 of them uh, uh yeah, we, I think we sold 160000 altogether within less than five years, and that's how we generated our first $10 million in sales. So it was, a, it was a program called Dialing for Dollars, and it was back then it was all about make, making money using a telephone answering machine to replace part or even all of what a salesperson normally does. 
you know, you know, just running classified ads with a recorded message. That was a re that was a novelty item back then. We still use that technology today, although most people don't know what an answering machine is, so it's all voicemail now. But you know, that's uh, that was it. One hundred and sixty thousand of those we sold over a four and a half year period. That is absolutely incredible, and of course, you never looked back, and it's been an amazing journey for you ever since. What do you think are some of the biggest reasons for your success? Well, first, I got to give credit to my wife, Eileen, because she's smarter than I am. And I had two business partners prior to Eileen. Um, you know, my, my best friend and I, we, were, we started the carpet cleaning business together in, in December of 85. Nine months later, we weren't best friends anymore. The, the, uh, the business destroyed the friendship. And um, and then I had another business partner that lasted a couple of months. That was both of these guys were exactly like I was. They were salespeople, you know. They were salespeople, promoters, hustlers. And I say hustlers in a positive way, you know, not in a negative connotation. But uh, you know, go getters. Uh, and my wife is the exact opposite. She's a business person. She doesn't get excited about anything hardly. Uh, she, you know, every I is dotted, every T is crossed watching those dollars go in and out. I don't, I never had any of those skills and I still don't have uh, those skills really. Um, uh, but uh, we made a good partnership. So that, and she was the CEO of, and president of the company for the first 11 years of our 33 years now. So without that, nothing would have happened. It's too many people end up with bad partnerships. And I always tell people that you know, not to go into business with their current friends. That's always a bad thing. It's, you know, if you have a, if you have a friendship that evolves around the business, that's great. That's one thing. Um, and, and some of my best friendships I have to this day are friendships with people that, but, but it involves around my business and their businesses. But when you take a pre-existing relationship, like my best friend, Gary, who I would have never even started without him. I mean, he, he, you know, we, but, Anyway, so that's, that's I guess, uh, is, is there anything in that story that, um, or you want to just move on, Seth? That, that, was, that was a great answer. What, see, you started before the internet, before social media, before email, even before the do not call list. How have, <laughs> yeah. how have all of the media changes over the years made your business work even better? Well, it's automated. Uh, it's, it's allowed us to do lots of automation that is really exciting now. And uh, it's given us advantages that we didn't have back then. Uh, some of this technology that, that, that I have fallen in love with. And uh, yeah, so it's just everything is much more automated and it's made it easier. It's made it more complicated. I, that's Yeah, everything is a lot more complicated nowadays. You know, it was easier back. It, it was in, well. I don't want to say it was easier. It was much simpler, even 20, 25 years ago. Um, but um, but yeah, I guess the automation features, the the ability to sell to large groups of people, and then even more importantly than selling to large groups of people, the ability to really hone down and and segment your customer client prospect list and work those small groups in an extremely effective way. All of the technology has helped us do that much, much better. And um, so I think that's, that's about the best answer I have there, Seth. That makes total sense. I, I get it. I agree with you 100%. What have you found have been some of the biggest mistakes people make over the years when it comes to getting involved in this type of business and getting started? Okay, well, the, the biggest mistake is the one that's on the top of my mind right now because I was just talking to one of my mentors about this this morning. So, you know, uh, Dan Kennedy, who is an important uh, teacher and, and, and mentor to me, and I think, I think he played a, some, some role in your, your life and your career also, Seth, so Dan Kennedy has this concept called takeaway selling. And it's something that I have to keep learning and relearning all the time. I keep forgetting. And I'll, takeaway selling is, 
it's it's more based on supply and demand than anything else and trying to do things to create the perception of a limited supply so that the demand for you and your products and your services and your company increases it's it's all about positioning and i'm constantly having to relearn this lesson that whoever is doing the chasing has less power than the one being chased and it and whenever possible it's always best to set yourself up in situations where you are the one being chased and you're not the one chasing. And, and the only problems that there, when you have two marketers that are trying to join venture with each other and they're both using that principle, it becomes pretty hard to get any business done. But, but look, it's all about perception. There, there's nothing special about me at all. I tell this to my staff all the time. And they all know it. Of course, they've been working with me for a long time. There, there's, there's nothing special about me, and yet we can't never, we can never let our prospective clients and our current members, we can never let them know that. They always have to feel as if when they're talking to me and when they get a chance to get through to me, or they, they just, we have to create those illusions. Of, hey, I'm from Kansas, and most people have seen the movie The Wizard of Oz. So most people have that reference point, and there's this one great line in that movie, Seth, where the wizard, who's a little tiny little man hiding behind the curtain, and, and the wizard has convinced the whole kingdom that he is almighty and all-powerful Oz. It turns out he's just a little tiny man, and, he's, and, and uh, there's a line in that, in that movie it just, where they finally catch him. They finally, uh, most, I think most people have seen that movie. It's a classic. And he, and he goes, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. And we all have to do things. It, call it game playing if you want to call it that. Call it manipulation if you want to call it that. I'm, I'm okay with, those, with manipulation as long as the intent is done for the right reason and you're selling quality products and services that deliver real value. Uh, you, have to, you have to continue to promote yourself. I, I see a lot of people really struggling with self-promotion. And I, I want to ask you, why is that, Seth? Why throw it back to you? I'd love to hear your – why do so many people struggle with self-promotion? I think it's because there's probably at some level a lack of self-confidence. There's probably yeah. some societal things in their head, mother, brother, sister, teacher, father, preacher, who have taught them you're not supposed to toot your own horn or the Australians and their tall poppy syndrome. They've been taught – that, you know, polite, nice boys or nice girls don't brag about themselves or don't do that. And I think that advice is completely misguided. And while I understand the intention of where it comes from, it certainly doesn't work from a marketing perspective because if you don't toot your own horn, no one else will. And if you've got a product or service that helps people that you believe in, I'll quote another mutual friend of ours, Jay Abraham, who says you have a moral obligation to do everything humanly possible to get them to take advantage of it. Right, right. Short of physical violence. <laughs> yes. I can't fly to their house and pull down, knock down their door and make them whip out a credit card, but I'll do everything else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that, man. I love that. All right. So you have written quite a few books. What inspired you to start sharing your wisdom? First and foremost, I am a book lover. So, I mean, I, I just got done. When I went on the road to see my mom. The uh, first time I've seen her in, in almost two years. And and I always thank her, man, like, oh, probably four or five times a year, I, I thank her profusely for helping me to fall in love with books and reading. And, and so, I, you know, I've, I've got thousands of books. I'm constantly giving them away. And I have so many that sometimes I can't find a good book. I'll just go buy another one on Amazon. And I, so I think I, because I love books as much as I do, it just made me, of course, want to be an author and, and that kind of thing. And then when I fell in love with marketing, when I fell in love with direct response and salesmanship and selling and, and what we call sales facilitation, which is something we're real excited about, um, it just, I, I've got, I guess I've got that natural evangelical, I want to share it with the world, man. I mean, just like a newborn baby Christian that wants to go beat everybody up with their Bible and bring everybody to Jesus. And I've got that natural evangelical, I, 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 I see so many entrepreneurs, so many salespeople struggling. And I 
just naturally uh, want to help people. I'm very passionate about marketing, and so it uh, one thing led to another, and now I've got a whole bunch of books for sale on Amazon, and uh, and but I continue. I produce thousands and thousands of hours of audio. Uh, we went through a, um, up until about five years ago. We used to have we had hundreds of seminars. We had teleseminars. We don't call them teleseminars anymore, but we still have. You know, just a, I just love all of this, and and I have a passion for for wanting to help other people and share a, share it with other people. So, I should have I should have been a televangelist, but uh, but uh, but no, I'm just I just love sharing this stuff, and I'm assuming you're the same way, Seth, at some level. Absolutely, I, that is one of my greatest pleasures is giving back and inspiring others. So we are certainly on the same wavelength there. What you talk about the fact that you've generated, you know, well over $150 million in sales and you say the best years are yet to come. Talk a little bit about that. Well, well, let's go back to my first one of my very first loves that I ever had. And this is a, this is a metaphor, it's an analogy. Uh, I fell in love back in the late 80s and early 90s with a medium that most people think is dead and yet think again, think again. It's newspaper advertising. I fell in love with newspaper advertising because our very first program that we ever developed, the Dialing for Dollars program that sold over 160,000, we sold, uh, most of our people back then were advertising in newspapers. That's what we were teaching back then. And of course, everything is different now in some ways, uh, newspaper, a lot of people think newspaper advertising is just dead, and in some regards it is. There's no question about it. But most people are also surprised to find out that there's more newspapers now than there, there have ever been. Wow. That's, that's fact number one. Now, most of them are smaller newspapers now, okay? So most of them are real small in circulation. But even that's a positive thing if you're doing a lot of testing and, and, and so forth. Um, but then the second thing is it's never been easier to advertise in newspapers either. When we, when we were doing this, you know, 30 plus years ago, it was extremely difficult. And now there's all these networks and, um, you know, where one, one phone call will get you in thousands of newspapers and all of that kind of stuff. So it, I just say that metaphorically. Most people think newspaper advertising is dead, but it's something I still think about a lot. Um, but, but, um, uh, I'm, I'm just excited about the future in a general kind of way because, well, look at this pandemic thing. I read in Forbes magazine, not the last issue, but the one before that, they did a whole article on all of these people that, uh, because of the pandemic, they lost their jobs or it caused them to reevaluate their lives. And now they're turning to entrepreneurship. See, that excites me. There's never, it's ne there's never been a better time for the average person who 100 or 200 years ago didn't stand a, a, a snowball chance in hell, so to say, of ever really doing anything on a major scale to do big, bold things, to live that dream lifestyle. We call it the lap, laptop lifestyle, you know, it's just to, to make money and build a business around their ideal lifestyle. So, you know... The, it, the all of the technology and all of the the amazing things that are, that are happening and continue to evolve empower people that never had a chance you know in another era if we were all born back in the 16th century or 15th century and you were born without money without privilege your life was so limited and nowadays i'm known as the blue jeans millionaire because there's, I'm, I'm the most average person on the planet. In fact, uh, below average in many, many, many ways. And yet I'm living proof that anybody can make a lot of money. You've got to get involved in the right deals with the right people. And this technology just makes it, I'm not going to say easier, but I am going to say it, the technology makes it a lot simpler and it's evolving all of the time. So I hope I, hope I said something there that, that helps somebody. You absolutely did. I've got pages and notes already. What is your, with all the success you've achieved, what's next for you? Where do you think the biggest opportunity is that you're most excited about? Well, I serve 
a market that is affectionately called the opportunity market. And in fact, out of all my books on that are for sale on Amazon, the one that outsells all the rest of them is how to get rich in the opportunity market. So I'm, that's it's what I'm known for. And uh, it's what separates me from a lot of other marketers who also are equally as passionate as I am about sharing these ideas and stuff. So it's called the opportunity market. And we sell, you know, low cost business opportunities like a like a non franchise franchise is what we call it, you know, where it has a lot of the same benefits of a franchise. It's a proven business model and um, tested with uh, all kinds of help, support and guidance from the, uh, the, uh, the what's normally the franchise, uh, the franchise or which is, you know, so. And and in this opportunity market, there are there are some business models, and I've tried all kinds of opportunities over the years. We've done them all. Uh, we we we've uh, I, I get enthusiastic very easily, and, and especially when I was younger, um, 25, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I I couldn't say no to any business opportunity, and I was involved in as many as 10 of them at one time, which was a huge mistake, by the way. Um, but uh, but I've seen certain business models where people with very limited resources do quite well. You know, people without a lot of time, without a lot of money, without no real skills or no previous ex business experience. And so we are very, very, very focused right now on that. This whole pandemic thing really caused us to reevaluate our business, just like it caused a lot of people to reevaluate their lives. And we started thinking about the future in a different kind of way. And, and, and so we chose this business model that we're using right now. We just started it earlier this year, but it's based on uh, several other opportunities we've been involved with going back as far as 15 years ago, where each one of these, op it's called the Ascension model, which a lot of marketers use that terminology for something similar to what we're doing. We just we also have a business opportunity attached to our Ascension model. And um, so it allows us to do all kinds of things that are exciting. And oh, here's another big thing about technology. I what 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 I really, really, really love, you asked me earlier, that was one of your very first questions about um, you know what I really love about today versus the, the past. I love how you can continue to add more value, more value, more value without adding to the price. Technology makes it possible for us to to do, just continue to give people more of what we know that they want and adding far more value without adding far more value to the, the, the cost of the thing, which is really exciting. And I don't know, man, the future's bright. I'm an eternal optimist. I, I'm, I'm greatly empowered or encouraged by the fact that I'm 62 years old now. I was making a joke, Seth, about how I'm old enough to be your father, because I did get started at a very young age, by the way. So, um, but but um, I, I've been reading Forbes magazine for several decades, and I see all these old guys that are in their 80s and 90s, and they're still they're still doing big things, and that encourages an old person like myself that. Uh, you know, I could if I live to be a hundred, I can be an entrepreneur till the day I die. And even though I, you know, as long as I don't get all Alzheimer's or or something like that, I mean, if, as long as I'm working through capable, competent, smart people, um, I can still be going strong. And that's very, you know, the experience does count in in the world of entrepreneurialism or self-employment or whatever. So. The future really is bright, man, and I hate all this negativity that's out there, Seth. I hate this, all this doom and gloom, apocalyptic, you know, our best days are over, and all this nonsense. I just, I just hate that with a passion. So, amen to that. I, I, again, all right, man. Well, we greatly appreciate your time. We know it's incredibly valuable for our folks watching and listening who want to learn more about what you're up to and how they can participate. Where is the best place for us to send them? Well, well, first of all, is my my one book that outsells all my others on Amazon.com. So, how to get rich? How to get super rich in the opportunity market? 
And then it sold so well, I came up with how to get super rich in the opportunity market volume two. So, so that contains what I call my A to Z formula. It's got 20, 26 major um, steps that sort of took us from rags to riches. And, um, and then, of course, you could, uh, they could also go to uh, tjrolletter.com. So that's uh, TJ. R O H L E D E R dot com. All right. This has been Seth Green with TJ Rolletter. TJ, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Seth. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.